Hey, good day. I'm Marty Walser, also known as Raging Owlbear on social media. And uh, being on social media, especially in D&D and tabletop realms, I'm often seeing questions from newer dungeon masters that says, hey, you know, I've already run the starter set, or I've already run the essentials kit, and I'm looking for the next big thing that I want to run as a campaign. And they might be thinking, oh, well, maybe I'll do Curse of Strahd or head up to Iceland Dale and do, you know, Rhyme of the Frost Maiden. Or, hey, we want to, let's fight some giants and Storm King's Thunder. Or do one of the other big hardbacks from Wizards of the Coast. And they say, you know, I want some recommendations. Which one should I run? And here's one of the things that I tell newer DMs. Well, first, before we get to that, if you haven't run the box sets, like Essentials Kit or the Starter Set, absolutely start, I'd say, with this one. The Essentials Kit is probably one of the best for absolute new DMs because the adventure pieces are small, easily easy to read, four, four or five pages. You digest that little encounter, you run it, you move on to the next thing. It's a great little sort of mini campaign in very bite-sized chunks for a new DM. That said, this question is often coming from, and, and it's not that the, the starter set isn't great also. I just think this one does a little bit better for the brand new Dungeon Master. This one might be something that for somebody who has a little bit more experience, but they're maybe just getting into fifth edition from a previous iteration or whatnot. In any case, both of these great products. But the question really comes from people who either their group has already played those, the introductory boxes, or, you know, they're looking for the next step into something a little bigger. And so they say, well, hey, you know, what about the hardbacks? And the hardbacks are great. There's a lot of really, really good adventures in the hardbacks. But if you are a newer dungeon master, and you're just getting your legs, you're just getting your sort of sea legs, so to speak. And maybe you've run the introductory boxes. What I would say is don't run one of these. You're probably thinking like, what? Isn't this video supposed to be about which book I should run next? And in a way it is, and it isn't. One of the reasons I say do not run one of these is pretty much because of this 300 pages. So it's not necessarily for all these hardbacks that you have to read the entire thing cover to cover before running a campaign. However, there's a lot of stuff that's going on in these, a lot of subplots, a lot of NPCs. There's a lot of relationships between the NPCs. So if you haven't read the entire thing, you might miss conveying stuff to your players. You might, it's for a newer DM, these are a heavy load. Hell, these, these are a heavy load, even for a very experienced DM. Cause they're just, they're big. They're big, long adventures. They have very long story arcs. They have lots of little sub plots and things like that. For a newer DM, I think they can present a fairly large challenge. And I think, especially for a newer group of players who want to explore the world of D&D, they can be a little bit, mm, can't think, quite think of the right word, but, but hampering a little bit. Let me, um, and let me explain why I don't think the hardbacks are necessarily the best next step. And then I'll tell you what I do think the next step is. So if you think of, um, if you were to look back in, in the history of D&D, back in the 80s and whatnot, in the early days, they didn't, there weren't these really, really big, thick, long adventures. They put out what were called adventure modules. There were small sort of mini plots that could be played over the course of a session, two, three sessions, you know, but basically a few, over a few levels, first through third level, 
four through six, stuff like that. They're, they're these nice bite-sized chunk. And if you go all the way back, you know, you have stuff like the classics, like, you know, Keep on the Borderland, which is from the old basic D&D box set. And, and then you have, um, you know, Cult of the Reptile God, which is another great advanced Dungeons and Dragons introductory module, which had a, a mystery and a cult and all kinds of things going on in this village. And then, of course, one of my favorite ones, you know, one of the original, very early um, uh, Advanced Dungeons & Dragons modules, Village of Hamlet, which is just, you know, great. Uh, I mean, th there's just so much that I can say about this, and I'm, I'm not going to get into right this moment. But And, you know, and you had stuff like X2 and, you know, et cetera, et cetera. They, these, all these little adventure modules that you could get back in the day, you know, would sometimes build on one another, but they weren't one campaign. They were... They were, you would drop in this one here, drop in that one there. You basically will allow you to take your players, whatever you kind of felt or whatever they felt like doing. You could, you know, throw in a, a plot about this or that. You'd buy a bunch of modules. You'd have some for first level, first through third level. You'd have some for the middle tier levels. And you'd pull off the shelf whatever kind of struck your fancy that week. I very much think that fifth edition could use more of that, especially for new, um, newer dungeon masters. Because instead of being sort of locked into a really heavy, long book and a campaign arc that might take you a year or even two years to run your players through, you could get these bite-sized modules that you can run over a few sessions. But Wizards of the Coast doesn't publish those types of modules anymore, but there are other companies that do and that are 5th edition compatible. To name a few, you have um, Kobold Press, you have uh, Frog God Games, you have Troll Lord Games, there, and then you have several other independent authors who also publish D&D adventure material out on the internet um, in PDFs and some on print on demand, various forms. So there's, there's actually a lot of material out there if you know where to look. And so I want to talk about a few of these because I believe these are really, really great for newer DMs. Because again, what you get from them is smaller chunks, smaller adventures, things that you can digest in a reading of a couple of days. You don't have to know this super thick book. Um, and, you know, there's there's a lot less, you have enough on your plate learning the system and kind of figuring out your play style with your new players, with you as a new DM. You're, you're already juggling a lot of sort of mental weight in learning a new game. So to sort of lessen some of that burden in the form of shorter, tighter adventures, I think really helps new game masters, new dungeon masters. So uh, let's talk about one of the first ones. Kobold Press is one of the independents, um, and they have they actually have a whole setting called Midgard, which has a whole bunch of stuff on it. But uh, recently put out a book called, not too long ago, Tales of the Old Margrave. And the premise behind this is, is uh, there's sort of this primeval forest with a lot of fey and, you know, very sort of uh, primal elemental energy going on in it. And this is a hardback, and it does have adventures for first level, third level, fifth level, whatever. So you could run this as a campaign, but they're actually all independents. So when you look at, uh, you know... Um, take a look at the, say, the table of contents. Um, you know, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, you know, nine, you know, about 12, 10 to 12 adventures of various levels, you know, first level adventures, second, third level, you know, stuff. So you could run your players through this entire book, you know, through all the sort of adventures that are not really interconnected. There's a few of them that that are somewhat connected. But for the most part, um, they're standalone adventures. So you could be running a game and pick and choose which ones out of this book you want to drop in. 
um, as you need them or if they fit the theme. Um, you know, and they're basically all, they're woodland based because they're all, they all take place in this the old Margrave forest. Um, but you could take it for your campaign and transport the ideas into whatever location, if you're running Forgotten Realms, if you're running Greyhawk or, you know, Nentir Vale even, whatever, whatever you're using, whatever game setting you're using, you can grab stuff out of this and just kind of pepper your campaign with it. Or like I said, you could use the setting, you know, it has its own little map um, of the forest and uh, one of the villages that, that the introductory adventure takes place. So this is really a great, you know, resource for new DMs to pick and choose adventures out of. Now, Wizards of the Coast, let me back up for a second. Wizards of the Coast does have a couple books that has some standalone adventures. Tales from the Awning Portal, um, Ghosts of Salt Marsh, and the new one that's coming out, the Candlekeep Mysteries. And those are also, I think, really good resources for new DMs who want to pick and choose stuff. Tales from the Awning Portal, probably less so than Salt Marsh and Candlekeep, in my opinion, simply because a lot of the Yawning Portal dungeons are, they're pretty big themselves and they have a very particular, a lot of them have a very particular play style because they're re-engineered from, from older modules that existed for previous versions of D&D. Um, you know, your mileage may vary, but um, those are also, I think, good resources. But again, you're not, you can't really run those as a campaign. So the idea is if you pick up a couple of these books, something like Margrave, you pick up something like Candlekeep Mysteries, um, you pick up Salt Marsh, you can kind of, you know, pick and choose things that you want to run. Um, so yes, Wizards of the Coast actually does, you know, I, I misstated somewhat in the beginning, Wizards of the Coast does have some of these modular, shorter run adventures that you can pick out. Um, so uh, that said, so that that comes from Kobo Press. And, and again, they have the Midgard setting um, and they have this hardback and some other things that you can find online. Um, another uh, group is called Goodman Games. And they have these little, very short, you know, nice uh, two session, maybe one, uh, three session adventures, two or three session, but you know, short, tight adventures that are, you know, uh, this one's 16 pages, 16 pages. Um, and you know, they have a whole, a whole range of these. This is one of the first ones they put out called Glitter Doom, where you, you, uh, go off and go up against a, a bunch of dwarves who are in some place that, you know, you want to kick them out of or vice versa. Um, so, you know, these are great. There's there, you can find them online. At PD, you can, you can buy them from, from Goodman Games, but you can also find them online in PDF form for fairly cheap. And again, they're very short. You can purchase them for a range of levels. You know, this is, this particular one is a level three, but they have, you know, all kinds of, for various tiers, high level ventures, middle, mid tier ventures. Um, and Goodman Games, not only that, but Goodman Games also has come out with some um, hardbacks, which I do not have, but they are basically updated versions of classic adventures, such as Keep on the Borderlands. So they have, we have one hard bit, hardback that has B1 in Search of the Unknown and Keep of the Borderlands, as well as some bonus material. They have the Isle of Dread, which is the, X, the old X1 uh, adventure from... Uh, way back when in the 80s. Um, so Goodman Games is doing a lot of fifth edition work. And so I, you know, I would say definitely uh, check them out. And I'm going to have links below the video and on the blog. So you can look look over some of the the suggestions that I've that I put out. Um, an, another uh, group that I would uh, recommend is um, the Troll Lord Games. Troll Lord Games as these uh, fifth edition adventures, um, and they publish uh, their own D and D style game called Castles and Crusades, and they've taken a lot of the Castles and Crusades adventures and done a conversion for um, D and D fifth edition. Uh, sorry, D and D fifth edition, 
And they are very sort of, they have a very old school flavor, very much like advanced Dungeons and Dragons. You know, so there's a little bit of a dungeon crawl, but um, this one, especially Assault on Black Tooth Ridge, which is their A1, they also have an A0, which is kind of a, not, not really a prequel, but it's in the same, they're all sort of tied into a, to a certain location called the Black Tooth Ridge um, and in the world of, of Aired. But uh, um, they're not really sequels. They, they don't have a single plot arc. They're, they're all standalone adventures. And this one, A1, is one of my favorites. I feel it's very much um, in the vein of the old uh, uh, Village of Hamlet, which, of course, I, I you know, have already raved about. Um, so Black Tooth Ridge, I, I feel, has a lot of a very familiar feel. It has that really great town that the adventurers are coming into as low-level adventurers with lots of interesting NPCs, little plot hooks, some of them not even fully fleshed out, but just a suggestion of something that the, the dungeon master could sort of run with. Um, and then, of course, they have the main adventure, which, you know, leads leads them into the Black Tooth Ridge and into a, a bigger dungeon where they have to fight various evils. <clears throat> um, so A0, A1... I think are fantastic uh, campaign introductory adventures. They have several others um, in the A series. They have a C series. So they have a, a whole bunch of these modules. And these ones are a little bit thicker than, say, the uh, the ones from Goodman Games, these sort of thinner 16 to 20 page uh, fifth edition fantasy ones. You know, this, this one um, in particular, um, you know, but 40 pages, 40, 44 roughly. So, you know, not certainly not uh, overwhelming, you know, you can, and, and it's, you know, chunked out into its various chapters. Uh, so, you know, uh, Frog God Games, which I don't have in print, but I've purchased in PDF, Frog God Games has a series called Quests of Doom, which is similar to, you know, uh, uh, the Goodman Games catalog there sort of these old school style adventures um, compiled and you know for various levels again you can pick and choose the ones you want um and you know there's there's uh you can even go back to aside from these uh fifth edition publishers you can even go back to if you go on the dms guild and look at some of the the classic modules and a lot of them are fairly, now, maybe for a new BDM, perhaps not. Some of them are fairly easy to convert. Um, as an example, the Village of Hamlet, which is was originally Advanced Dungeons & Dragons, well, they did a they did a 4th edition version, which is which was the prior to 5th edition. And 4th edition is very different. Let me just give that little precursor. 4th edition, edition has a very different sort of rule set and plays very differently than 5th edition. But... This particular version, um, which is actually available on DM's Guild in, in Dungeon uh, 212, which I'll link to, um, if you just change the monster stats to the 5th edition uh, stats instead of the 4th edition and just sort of ignore the stat box, you can pretty much run it fairly easily. Um, and and I and I absolutely, you know, I've run this, <laughs> I've run this in every edition, Advanced Dungeons & Dragons. Second edition, uh, I ran a version of it. Third edition, fourth edition, and another ran sort of another version. Fifth edition, I just the village of Hamlet is just a classic, you know, adventure town, some ruins that you have to explore at a dungeon. It's just it's the whole package of that sort of classic D and D fantasy. Um, and there's even some others. Uh, this was one I, I came across. This one. I don't think this one's actually available for DM Guild. I've I've tried to look for it against the Cult of Chaos, but I, I like this one because it it had some. It was used during the fifth edition play test, um, so uh, you could get the sort of conversion sets. It was a fourth edition module, but it was used for the fifth edition play test, so you could get a conversion guide for this. This was another one that sort of combines the B two and the N one and Village of Hamlet all into sort of one interesting package um but this one is is pretty hard to find you have on ebay it's kind of expensive but 
So maybe that's not the best example. But again, you you look at stuff like Tales from Alt Alt Margrave from Cobalt Press. Um, you look at the the Troll Lord, Troll Lord Games, uh, the Fifth Edition Adventures, um, Fifth Edition Fantasy from Goodman Games, the Goodman Games uh, Classic Adventure Conversions. There are a whole lot of these sort of a la carte adventures for you to pick up. Um, oh, uh, just off the top of my head, there's, there's a couple of people who offer adventures online. There's this, there's a, a fellow named DM Dave um, who publishes a, a new adventure pretty much every week and puts it out on the net for free. I mean, you know, various levels, mid-tier, uh, early tier and he sells some he sells some other ones as well but he puts up free short adventures like pretty much weekly i don't know well, i don't know if it's every week but it's very often um so you know uh there's uh mike shea who's also known as sly flourish who has put out a book uh ruins of grendel root and also uh, uh, another one called fantastic locations and fantastic layers so he has all of this other adventure material as well that you could get um there's uh so there, there's several other of these i mean i i can't think of all of them off the top of my head but there's a bunch you publish on drive through rpg and uh, you can find so i absolutely would say if you're a newer dm and you've already run you know you've already run uh the dragon of ice fire fire keep or you've run lost mind of fan delver and you're looking for something else, I think before you dive into those really heavy hardbacks, this is, which which will be a really long campaign, consider going with the smaller, thinner adventure modules that are out there that are being published by the independents. And I'll have links on my blog. I'll have links below this video. Um, so that's my recommendation. If you want to know what hardback you should run, maybe maybe hold off on running one of the big hardbacks for now and focus on these smaller, shorter adventures because, you know, if you get bored with one of them, it's going to be over in a couple sessions. You get it, you get 70 pages into a hardback, well, you still got a year, almost a year of campaign sessions to finish that one campaign. So, you know, sometimes these little bite-sized mini plots are just a lot more fun to run because you don't get stuck in one of these larger books. And, you know, I enjoy these big campaigns, but even I, I've, I've been running uh, Storm Kings for my group for a long time now, and, and I'm ready for it to be done. I mean, I'm, it has been almost a little bit challenging to get to the end because they are, they're long and there's a lot going on. And I'm ready to go back to. I'm ready. I'm ready to go back to smaller. You know. Little, sixteen pages at a time, thirty-two pages, forty pages, little chunky things like that that I can knock out. I could do one session, two session, five sessions at most, and then be done and move on to the next thing. So. Um, that's, that's pretty much the, the gist of what I was going to say. I'm Marty, also known as Raging Albear. You can find me on Twitter here on YouTube, um, and my blog, um, ragingalbear.blogspot.com. I hope this has given you some ideas and been helpful. Maybe it wasn't what you thought you were going to hear because I didn't necessarily recommend one of the hardbacks, but, uh, I'm, I'm hoping that maybe you got something out of this. So please like, please subscribe, give me a little boost. And, uh, and I hope you uh, watch some more of my videos. So thank you for hanging with me and I'll see you around.